Hello, my name is John David Powell, and from the television studios of the School of Communication at the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Houston, this is Discovery. Our two guests this month come from the faculty ranks and from our student body. They're examples of the outstanding class research, the results from collaborations by faculty, researchers, and students. Charles Orson Cook received his Ph.D. from the University of Houston and teaches Honors American History in the Honors College. He has a special interest in 19th century popular culture and American race relations. And Derek Goodwin is a junior history major with a minor in global business. Last fall, Derek spent a semester interning in the Department of Homeland Security in Washington, D.C. His focus is on the Middle East, and Derek is from Bonham, Texas, and we are pleased to have both of you with us today. For having us. So do you we feel more secure now because you were in <laughs> Well, I hope so. We try and do, we try and make it safer each day. How'd you get that job? Uh, well, I, I uh, was interested in, in interning in D.C., um, and, and I found out about a program through the Fund for American Studies that allows students to come for a semester. And luckily, their program had connections at the Department of Homeland Security. So I let them know my interests were in national defense, and they were able to pair me up. I was yeah. really fortunate. What'd you do? Well, I, I worked in the uh, Office for the Homeland Security Advisory Council. Uh, they're responsible for overseeing and coordinating meetings for advisory councils that are appointed by the secretary just to discuss you know, a, a range of topics, maybe airport security, uh, port security, um, whatever the topic of the day is. We bring in specialists to talk it out and try and come to a conclusion. You going back? Uh, well, I, I, I hope to go back to D.C. Uh, this summer, either an inter uh, another internship in that office um, or uh, with the Department of Defense. So, so hopefully I'll, I'll be heading back. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the research. I, I learned about it. Uh, you had a, a display and you, you talked to the Board of Regents, the members of the Board of Regents, uh, back in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, an interesting topic. I believe you went back uh, and found someone who was uh, instrumental in uh, the NAACP in Texas back in the early 1900s. Yes, absolutely. And how'd you come about this? Uh, well, um, Dr. Cook had found a, an article by uh, Dr. Stephen Reich about um, black Texan soldiers returning um, to Texas and trying to get the vote. Uh, and within that article, we found Mary Talbert, uh, just a one-line mention and we, uh, w about her coming to Texas to recruit for the NAACP, and we thought, well, you know, let's explore this, see if there are some, some uh, 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 research materials, some, some sources that would allow us to put together a good article and a good project. And it turned out with the records from the NAACP and, and her own uh, correspondence, we were able to, in a way, reconstruct this tour she did through Texas. She established um, nine new chapters, did uh, recruitment uh, drives at four others in the major cities, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Austin. Um, so she was very instrumental in bu building the early Texas NAACP uh, membership. Um, by the end of her work, um, NAACP membership in Texas was the highest of any state in the nation, which is just incredible when you consider, you know, it's in the heart of the South in the early 20th century. So definitely felt her story was worth telling. Is working with a student any different from, uh, say, collaborating with another faculty member? It is different. Um, uh, students are more enthusiastic than faculty members, yeah. uh, so that's a plus. Uh, they're energetic, they're interested, they're hard, hard to restrain sometimes. Um, colleagues, professional colleagues, are less difficult to restrain. But the, the positives of this are, I think, that students uh, get engaged quickly in the material. Uh, they follow leads uh, uh, like a bulldog, at least in this case, that, that happened. <laughs> Uh, and, and they face frustrations uh, with a whole lot more um, uh, patience, I think, than those of us who've been around a long time. Yeah. What kind of frustrations? Well, the big frustration for Derek in this project was that about two-thirds of the way in it, no, not quite that far, half the way in it, he discovered that Mary Talbert's papers, for which we had been searching for weeks, didn't exist, uh, that they had been accidentally burned just a few years ago. and so. Uh, rather than quitting on the project then, he decided to find other ways to piece together the story. Fragmentary to be sure, but nonetheless creative. Uh, and I don't, th I don't think th that without that energy, without that uh, creativity, that we would have finished this project. 
So what do you do with a project like this? And now that you have discovered this, what next? What's, what's the next step? Well, um, just, uh, uh, I guess, two weeks ago, I presented a, a shortened version of the paper, uh, um, Mary Talbert and the Texas NAACP, uh, at the Southwest Social Science Association meeting in Las Vegas. Um, it was pretty well received there. I got some, some uh, good compliments as well as you know, some ways to strengthen and improve the paper. And then over uh, the course of the next uh, month or so, we're going to um, look into what journals, um, maybe a Black uh, Study Center, or Black, black Study Center, a journal of uh, uh, Southwest Historical Journal, um, to see uh, if, if we can uh, get it published. Um, what do we do to, to get students more interested in research? You know, there, there's this fear that, that research is like term papers and it's just a, a lot of drudgery doing this research, but research can be fun. What, what do you do to, to recruit students into, uh, into research and getting them interested? I think there are two things uh, that are necessary. One is that a student has to um, be confident that he or she can work with a faculty member, and that requires building a relationship that is difficult to do if, if you've got large classes of three or four hundred. It's much easier to do in the Honors College, where our classes are smaller. So, so I think that's the first thing, that you need to have this collaborative, supportive, uh, trusting relationship. A, a second thing, though, is to convince students that this is the only way history is made. We can read what other historians have written from now until the cows come home, mm -hmm. but it really won't enlighten us about what actually happened. If you want to carry on what a friend of mine calls a dialogue with the past, you have to do that with primary materials, primary research. And, and once students begin that process, it becomes, I think at least, exhilarating, exciting in a way that lecture halls can never be. And I think we've got a prime example of that right here. I think so, too. Orson Cook and Derek Goodman, thank you for being with us. I thank enjoyed you. having you, and uh, we expect uh, more things uh, out of you. Hopefully and, so. Uh, maybe we, you and I can visit again on some of your research. I hope so. Thank you. I'm John David Powell, and for all of us here at the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.